Did you know that 75% of resumes are rejected by applicant tracking systems or ATSs before they even reach a human recruiter? If you've been job hunting and wondering why you're not hearing back, this might be why. Let's uncover the mystery behind an ATS. Top of the morning, everyone. My name is Tidi and I'm back with a brand new video. Today's video is diving into the world of applicant tracking systems or ATSs for short. If you're wondering what an ATS is and why companies are using them, the different types of ATSs and why they matter to you as a job seeker, stick around because I've got all the answers. What is an ATS? An applicant tracking system or an ATS is a software application that helps companies manage recruitment processes. Essentially, it acts as a gatekeeper, screening resumes and applications before they even reach a human recruiter. Think of it as a digital assistant that helps HR teams stay organized and efficient. The question that people ask is, why do companies use it? Well, companies use ATSs for several reasons. First, it saves a lot of time. Now, sorting through hundreds or even thousands of applications manually is incredibly time consuming. An ATS also automates this process. It makes sure that recruiters are focused on the most qualified candidates and gets rid of the candidates that are not qualified. Secondly, it improves efficiency. ATS software can quickly identify candidates who meet the job requirements based on the keywords that have already been put on that job, the experience as well as the skills, ensuring that no potential hires are overlooked. Also at the same time, sometimes ATSs can be misused and abused where they end up being used to regret even some of the most qualified candidates in certain processes. Finally, it helps with compliance and record keeping. If you're living in Europe, you have to worry about GDPR. If you're living in South Africa, you have to worry about Poppy. ATS system keep track of all application data, making it easier for companies to comply with the employment laws as well as making sure that we maintain the proper records. There are so many different types of ACSs, varying from standalone ATS where it's just fully dedicated to just applicant tracking. So it just tracks applications that are coming in. There's also an integrated HR suite. These are broader human resource platforms where then a combination of ATS that also is combined with HR record keeping on the other hand. It's combined with payroll, it's combined with leaf applications, combined with so many different things. And then there's also recruitment marketing platforms. Now recruitment marketing platforms, it's an ATS that can be used for employer branding, for sourcing, engagement to attract top talent. And then also there's small business ATSs, which are tailored for small companies only. Now there are obviously different types of ATSs. The most commonly known ones is Workday, uh, we also have Taleo, which is also one of the most popular ATSs. We've got Greenhouse, very popular, Lever, Jobvite. And these are different ATSs that different companies use to make sure that they bring in the best talent that they currently have in the market. One of the things that people always then wonder is, okay, cool. So now we know what an ATS is. We know the type of ATSs that exist. And we also know which ATSs are there. There's also a question of screening questions. What are screening questions and why should you pay a lot of attention to these things. Screening questions are basically a set of predefined questions that applicants have to answer before they can complete the application process. For example, they would say, do you have at least five years experience in this field? If you answer no, then most of the time the ATS will score you a lot lower. Are you legally authorized to work in this country? If you say no, the ATS normally will give you a zero score or it will actually score you even lower so that they don't have to go through your resume. Do you have a valid driver's license if the job that you've applied to is actually requiring that the person should be able to drive? What did you expect the salary range? These questions are obviously designed to identify the most qualified candidates. Why does it matter to you as a candidate? For job seekers, understanding an ATS is crucial because it actually affects how your resume is processed and viewed. That's why I always say to people, if you're going to apply for any job, try and use a single column resume because ATSs are there to screen and parse data from your resume. An ATS screens resumes for specific keywords and formats. And if you have a resume that's not optimized, which is normally a double column resume, it might never reach the human recruiter because of the fact that the ATS is gonna score it a lot lower. Knowing how an ATS works can also help you tailor your resume with the relevant keywords for the job description, ensuring that it actually passes the initial screening. That's why I always say to people, you need to make sure that every time you apply for a job, you tailor your resume for that job that you're applying to because of the fact that the ATS will screen whatever you have as keywords that are there to compare them to the job description that's out there. Additionally, understanding an ATS can also help you format your resume correctly. The question that I also do get is, can you beat an ATS as a candidate? Can you trick it? Absolutely, you can improve your chance of getting past an ATS by following these tips. Tip number one is use keywords. Tailor your resume to include keywords from the job description. An ATS can scan for specific terms related to the skills and experience as well as the qualifications. That's why we always say, 
please try and use ChatGPT to try and understand which keywords are key in that job description so that you can actually try and tailor some of those keywords for the job. But please do not use keywords of jobs that you have never done. Simple formatting. We always say to people, please make sure that you have a single column resume. Use a very clean standard format for your resume to avoid graphics, fancy fonts, and unusual layouts that an ATS might not be able to easily read. Section headings. You also need to make sure that you use standard headings like work experience or experience, education, skills, which are normally categorized already in your resume. So you'll find that those categories of subheadings are normally what the ATS understands and easy to read when it comes to information that you've already shared. Spell out abbreviations. For example, I've been talking about ATS, ATS, ATS. Please don't just put ATS. In some instances, make sure that you put out the whole thing. So some ATS might not recognize abbreviations, so spell them out like Bachelor of Science instead of BSc. Save your document as a PDF or a .doc. Some ATSs or some systems have trouble reading certain files. Like if you have, for example, a PNG file, You'll find that some systems actually struggle to read that so the ask from my side is try and put together that resume and make sure that you export it as a word document or a pdf some ATS will struggle with some of these and pdf is normally the best one because it doesn't destroy the formatting once you follow these different steps you can then increase the likelihood of you being able to make sure that your resume passes the first stage of the ATS which will then allow you to then get a chance to actually speak to the recruiter. So to sum this up, an ATS is actually a critical tool that companies use to streamline everything that they're doing, their recruitment processes. And by understanding how an ATS work can help you tailor your resume to increase your chance of making it past the digital gatekeeper and into the hands of obviously a recruiter, which is what you want. And if you found these tips very helpful, please don't forget to like, don't forget to share, subscribe, and share this content with some of your friends. Top of the morning once again. See you in the next video. Peace.